When you're a school like Oregon, you can always recruit some of the top players in the country. Everyone wants to play for the Ducks, and with their recent quarterback success, it's a no-brainer to consider them if you're a big-time quarterback prospect. Recently, we saw Justin Herbert become a top 10 pick, and Bo Nix is playing his way into first-round conversation for the 2024 draft. Going back a couple of years, though, the Ducks thought they had found their future in Jay Butterfield. At one time, Jay Butterfield was the number two pocket-passing quarterback in his class, had pretty much unlimited potential, and was expected to be the next great Ducks quarterback. Unfortunately, things have not gone as planned for him, as a couple of transfers have derailed his chances of starting, and now he'll be off to a lower-level school, trying to save his career. In today's video, we're going to talk about the insane story of Jay Butterfield. We're going to go through his recruitment, talk about his journey, his Oregon career, and why he can still easily save his career and maybe still get to the NFL. The last name Butterfield is not new to the West Coast, as his dad, Mark, played at Stanford from 1992 to 1995. He had an exceptional career at Antioch High School in California before he went to Stanford and led them to a 7-4 record. Like father like son, Jay grew up loving the Cardinal, as his dad said, quote, he wore a Stanford jersey growing up and Jim Harbaugh was the coach then. Early on, Jay loved the quarterback spot, but didn't realize just how good his dad was until nearly a decade ago. He said, quote, I realized at a young age, probably around 10, of my father's legacy. It's great to follow in his footsteps, and he was a great quarterback himself, so hopefully I can be as good as him one day. He was always the starter and the next big thing on his little league and middle school teams, but when he arrived at Liberty High School, things would be a little bit different for him. He'd have to sit on the bench. He said, quote, My whole life I've always been the starter, so I never knew what it was like to sit on the bench. But seeing the game flow, seeing how much faster it was coming up from the year before, got me a lot of experience coming into this year. Jay obviously had a ton of potential, but he would have to wait his turn. When did his father know he was special? Well, it was when pretty much everyone else knew it was special. His first start would come his senior year, and apparently he had insane poise going into it, and with it being the final game of the season, a lot was at stake. He won the job and went 12 of 14 for 250 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, and beat the rival. Pretty good first impression. Going back a little bit, they would have a quarterback battle for most of his sophomore year, but eventually Jay would take over and just figured it out. His coach said, quote, then he just lit it up in the playoffs, brought us our first championship in school history, and that's when I was like, okay, this kid just has to win. What was the logic behind having Jay on the bench? Well, he said, quote, we had a six foot five senior ahead of him. From there, Butterfield would snatch the starting spot for the rest of his career and ripped off three straight wins to win the Northern California Division I title, which as I said, was the first in school history. Now, combining that with camp and throwing the ball for coaches, he'd start to become a bigger name and bigger offers would pile in for him. But where would he go? Well, first, you have to remember his love for Stanford. That's when Jim Harbaugh was the coach there, but now with him being the head man at Michigan, many thought he would go and play there. After watching Michigan play Wisconsin, he came out and said, quote, It was a great trip, and the big house was awesome. I had a chance to tour the facility, watch practice, and meet with Coach Harbaugh and Hamilton. It was a great trip overall. From there, many expected him to commit, but it wouldn't end up happening. He was going to weigh his options, and he said, quote, I haven't really created a list yet, as I've mainly been focused on my team season and accomplishing our goals. When I sit down with my family and coaches after the year and take some official visits, I will start making a list, but Michigan will be up on that list. You also can't forget about his childhood school, but David Shaw really dropped the ball, as Stanford either didn't offer or was really late to offer, as they apparently didn't want to scare off another guy they had already signed. One 24-7 scout said, quote, Stanford took 2018 five-star Tanner McKee, and he would return from his Mormon mission by the time Jay would arrive. Again, I think that was absolutely ridiculous, as Jay wanted to play there. He said, quote, It was always a childhood dream of mine to go to Stanford, play quarterback there, and follow behind my dad's footsteps. But I'm open to anywhere. Stanford really dropped the ball. Why was he getting so much hype? Well, in his sophomore and junior seasons combined, he had 4,688 yards, 58 touchdowns, and went 17-1 as a starter. He was also 6'6". Six six. Eventually, it was time to make a decision. This would come shortly after the number two quarterback in the nation would pick his school. At the time of this commitment, Jay was the second-rated pro-style quarterback in the country behind DJ Uyangalale, who's the guy who, who spurned Oregon to go to Clemson. After DJ U gave indications that he was going to go to Clemson, Oregon started to ramp up the recruitment of Jay. He chose the Ducks over 15 scholarship offers, including Tennessee, Michigan, Colorado, and Cal. Some were sad that they missed out on DJ, but Jay was a solid consolation prize. 
This quote consolation prize was the third highest ranked quarterback recruit in school history behind Kellen Clemens and Dennis Dixon. So honestly, I'd barely classify Jay as a backup option. Why did Jay end up committing there? He said, quote, I couldn't really think of a con for Oregon. I really liked the campus, the facilities, and the coaches. I felt comfortable right when I walked up to the athletic facility. Everyone was welcoming. The vibe and enthusiasm was great. And the support was awesome. Oregon fans got their backup option, but he was still pretty good, but he was not perfect. The biggest worry about his game was that he was ultra skinny, lacked some athleticism, and played suspect competition. But you can't teach six foot six. He was accurate and had a great arm. So if he was developed properly, he was gonna be a star. He was super talented on the football field and projects as a multi-year Power 5 starter and a late second day, early third day pick. But that was just the tip of the iceberg for him. His coach consistently raved about how great of a person he was as he had a 4.0 GPA, was a good basketball player, worked with special needs kids, was in a leadership class, and was just overall a stand-up person. His coach said, quote, he's a once-in-a-lifetime student athlete to have on campus and you don't get too many of these. Overall, it looked like Jay was the perfect package, as according to 24-7 Sports, Butterfield was a four-star recruit, the number five pro-style quarterback, and the 147th best player in the class of 2020. So, how did the son of a Pac-10 legend do at a Pac-12 school? Well, let's take a look. When Jay would arrive at Oregon, he would have the opportunity to compete right away. Justin Herbert was off to the NFL following the 2019 season, putting him in a battle with Tyler Shuck, Cale Millen, and Anthony Brown. Unfortunately, he would not be able to see the field, as Shuck would play most of the season before Brown would take over late. Because of how well Brown played, he won the starting job in 2021, and once again, Butterfield was on the bench. Shuck had left for Texas Tech, and Millen had also left. While Butterfield had a ton of hype to his name, at a school like Oregon, you're quickly replaced. They had already brought in a new quarterback in 2021 five-star Ty Thompson, and they were already working on their 2022 player. Going into the 2022 season, he was asked about transferring. He said, quote, Anywhere you go, there's going to be great competition. I felt like staying was the best choice for me, and there's going to be competition anywhere, so I might as well get it done here. While I absolutely love the attitude and mindset of Jay, he was just never going to get a chance to actually play for them. Bo Nix decided to leave Auburn and come to Oregon, and he pretty quickly won the starting job, and it seemed that Thompson settled in as the backup. For the third straight season, Butterfield was an afterthought and was just someone with a good arm. You'd already seen multiple other players transfer, such as Robbie Ashford to Auburn, and now it was time for Butterfield to do the same. In total at Oregon, he made two game appearances, throwing four career passes. He had four passes in three seasons in Eugene, and you could say, for being the third best quarterback recruit ever, this would not end up living up to the hype. So where was he going to go? Well, I remember personally when I read the news, I thought he could settle in a lower power five school, but ultimately, it looks like he just wants to play. He decided to transfer to San Jose State, and I think this is the biggest win in San Jose State recruiting history. Currently, San Jose has Siobhan Cordero, who was the second best quarterback in the conference behind Jake Hayner last season. So while Siobhan will be the starting quarterback this year, Butterfield will get a chance to learn the offense and then probably take over in 2024. Ultimately, if this holds true, Jay will have completed three passes in four years of college football. That is not what anybody would have expected from him coming out of high school, but that's how cruel and difficult the quarterback world is in college football. There are only so many starters, and sometimes you don't even get an opportunity. Hopefully, Jay will get a chance to save his career at San Jose State, and I'll definitely be watching and rooting for him. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including this former five-star quarterback who is now at an FCS school. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.